Today marks the 10th anniversary of Demon's Souls. It launched on February 5th, 2009 for the PS3 in Japan and later on in North America in October. Without question, however you feel about it, this is one of the most important and influential games to have been released over the past decade. Let's begin with a little history. Now while many may think From Software, the developer, sprung up out of nowhere with this game, the company has existed since 1986 even though their first game, Kingsfield, was would not ship until 1994. I won't delve too much into their history, but it is important to bring up Kingsfield because in many ways, Demon's Souls is like a spiritual successor. Another series some may know them for is Armored Core. Whether you knew them from either of those two entries or any of the other games they developed or published prior to 2009, Demon's Souls is definitely the game to put them in the zeitgeist, although I don't think it really hit critical mass until its sequel, Dark Souls. Speaking of, you may be wondering why did they change the name and not go with Demon's Souls 2? Well, in Japan the game was published by Sony Computer Entertainment, in North America it was published by Atlas, and then in Europe, the PAL region, it was published by Namco Bandai Games, their name at the time. Sony's Japan studio also had a hand in its creation, so they basically owned the rights to the name, that's why it was never released on any other platform other than the PS3. But because the critical praise was so high, From Software decided to continue the franchise via Dark souls. There's more to it, but that's the general gist of the background. So what is Demon's Souls, and why is it so special? If you have no idea, somehow in 2019, the rad thing about this game was that it told you nothing. You waken in a mysterious world with creepy monsters, traps abound, and NPCs that barely tell you any story. Not only that, but it was hard and punishing. If you fell in battle, all souls, your experience points basically, would stare where you died. You could go back and retrieve them, but if you died again on the way, those other souls would be lost forever. It was a callback to the NES days in more than one way. On one hand, this was a refreshing change of pace for some as it created a community. Never had the internet been so important to games. This experience would be near impossible without the insight of others. Okay, maybe not to finish, but without people talking about it and spreading rumors, theories, tips, what have you, it probably wouldn't be the darling that it is today. On the other hand, the difficulty was off-putting for others while myself falling into that latter category. Why would I want to play a game where I can lose my experience points and one that looks uglier than sin? It wasn't until my friend sat me down in college and made me play the opening segment that I understood the appeal of risk-reward. Now, From Software wouldn't be the only company to continue what they started in Demon Souls, copycats spring up in both direct and indirect ways. Direct examples would be Neo, Lords of the Fallen, and The Surge. As Demon's Souls is kind of a roguelike or rogue light, you could also award it the honor of reviving the genre in a big way, especially for indie developers, but with Rogue Legacy, Hollow Knight, and Ashen as the most recent example. The quality of these clones vary, of course. Demon's Souls may be lost to time due to its exclusivity on the PS3 and because it is the prototype for what would become Dark Souls as if this never existed. Sometimes these retrospectives aren't about long histories or deep dives. They can just focus on highlighting the past to honor what came before. I had fun with it, sure, and going back to play it now still felt great, but it never hooked me as much as it did others. That said, I still respect the hell out of it. For better or worse, without Demon Souls, the video game landscape would have certainly turned out differently. If you like this video and want to see more from me, then subscribe to my channel, and also check out my articles over at The Gamer. All these links and more are in the description notes below. Thanks for watching!